Welcome to episode 54. Hey, this is John Lee Dumas of EO Fire, and you're listening to Who Did That Voice, where we take an in-depth look at voiceovers. Finally, warmer weather is here, and there is no better time than right now to book your vacation getaway with 3D Travel Company. Head on over to our website at www.whodidthatvoice.co and click the Book Now button on the left-hand side. They give a complimentary quote so you can get an idea of what it will cost to take your summer vacation. For a limited time, Who Did That Voice listeners can receive a Disney gift card for qualifying Disney and Universal trips booked and traveled by the end of 2017. Hurry and book today so you can travel away. Welcome to Who Did That Voice, the show where we take an in-depth look at voiceover. And now, here's your host, Trenton Larkin. Hey everyone, and welcome back to the show. Today's special guest has voiced Lord Viper on King Arthur and the Knights of Justice. Warlords, attack! Destroy Camelot! Today's special guest also voiced Gutsman from the 1994 Mega Man. Hey, Gutsman, what do you shout when you're cutting down a tree? Uh, timber? If you insist. The last preview we're going to cover today is from Beast Wars Transformers. Today's special guest voiced Optimus Primal, the leader of the Maximals. Maximals, maximize! Moderate your conflict circuits, Maximals. Remember, these beast forms are to protect us from the long-term effects of the Energon fields out there. We may need Energon for power, but this is too much of a good thing. Our robot forms will start to short out after a few minutes exposure. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Who Did That Voice? Today on the show we have Gary Chalk joining us. Gary, thanks so much for coming on the show today. It's my pleasure. Well, Gary, the very first thing we always like to do is just to get a little bit of a, a background on who our guest is on the show today. So just tell us, who is Gary Chalk, and how did you get into acting, and specifically voice acting? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> let me see. It started out, I was, uh, well, I've always been a bit of a performer. I was uh, a musical performer and whatnot since I was a kid, and and I loved singing, so... I uh, was in amateur theater when I was in high school and that sort of thing, but I, I didn't think it was a career choice. I didn't think people made money from it. You know, I always thought it was only in the movies. <laughs> but I found out that they do make money from it, and uh, I, went to, I went back to university about 1973 or 74, and I wanted to teach English and anthropology. That's what I originally went in for. And then I went downstairs to the theater company called uh, Studio 58, which is a pretty well, well known and well respected theater school now. And uh, I saw a show called Mice and Man, and I just fell in love with it. And I went, this is what I want to do. And I signed up, did an audition. And the, uh, the head of the theater department uh, just said, well, you've got some talent, not much, but some. All right, you're in. So... Uh, <laughs> They only take 15 students every term, so they come from across the country. So uh, I said, oh, great, now I have to deal. You know, <laughs> I, have to, I have to make it work. Yeah. So I uh, went into theater school and I had a, you know, I always excelled in, in voice and singing and stuff. And acting was not bad, pretty good. I did a show, uh, a, a, a musical cabaret called uh, Jacques Brel's Alive and Well and Living in Paris. And I got the best reviews of my life from national radio and whatnot on that show. And it kind of launched my career. And I started working in theater as soon as I finished theater school. And uh, one day my teacher came up to me and he says, you know, I have this friend who wants someone to do a, uh, do a, uh, a, a, an advertisement on the radio for their place, which was a nursing home. So I said, okay. So I did the commercial and uh, they liked it. 
And I thought, and I got paid for it. And I went, oh, well, this is kind of cool. And so I put together a tape, which was awful. But, uh, and I, I, I mean, it's embarrassingly awful when I first heard it. But then um, I was in Ottawa. I had moved there with my wife at the time to, um, you know, because she got seconded to another company there. And I said, well, I got to go. So I put my feelers out and uh, started getting a, a, a commercial or some voiceover stuff for narration and whatnot. And then uh, I did a, an ad for a company called the Ottawa Citizen, the newspaper. But I couldn't match the guy who originally did it because he was away. And uh, they said, no, nope, this isn't working. And I had no idea about, you know, the different kinds of reads that you have. You know, I was just to my usual stentorian self, the Ottawa Citizen for the latest and blah, blah, blah. And they said, no, nope, that's not what we want. So I was kind of devastated and uh, I turned and I went back to the producer of that commercial uh, at a place called Sound Ventures way back when. I think it's still in, still going. And I said to him, look, it, if you help me put together a demo tape and uh, explain to me about what all these different kinds of reads are, then I'll do your next commercial for free. So he did. And sure enough, I did his next commercials for free in exchange for the for the service. And it was for Revenue Canada, of all things. From that tape, I uh, started booking all these commercials, local commercials in Ottawa and Montreal. And then I came to Vancouver and I put together a better tape. And uh, my voice career started and uh, I, I started doing tons and tons of commercials which was really great. And then the animation world came into Vancouver. It was quite new. And I think the very first show they did uh, was a show called Tech Force, which I didn't get. I auditioned for it, but I didn't get it. And um, then they came up with G.I. Joe and they wanted voice matches for G.I. Joe. So I watched all the cartoons and I did voice matches and I ended up getting like three or four different characters because I could mimic their their voices like Metalhead and Pathfinder and Sci-Fi and Road Pig and all these other ones. So I thought, wow, there is something. This is fun. Um, oh, do you know what I forgot before that? Wh wh how I got into cartoons. While I was in Ottawa, uh, my agent in Ottawa sent me out to... Um, to a uh, place called uh, Atkinson Film Arts. And this company was famous for, uh, they did the show, The Man Who Skied Down Everest. And they did um, uh, Fritz the Cat and Heavy Metal. And uh, they were going to do a, the, the, this series of cartoons for uh, uh, Nickelodeon called Kenner Classics. And my very, very first cartoon was a show called Hiawatha and I auditioned for it, but I ended up getting several characters on the show and uh, I got paid for each character and I went, well, this is pretty nifty. <laughs> and it was, Fantastic. you know, the old way of old fashioned way of doing cartoons. And uh, you can, I think it's still out there somewhere on the internet. Then after that, I did a, you know, voicing aliens on Alien Star Lost and some other things for CGOH, which is a television station in, in Ottawa. And then I came out to Vancouver and did the same thing, started doing commercials. And then cartoons came. And uh, my first cartoon in Vancouver, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was Barbie and the Rockers was the first Barbie cartoon and I just had small parts on it as radio announcer or show announcer and whatnot. And that went really well with Martha, Marsha Goodman from uh, Deke animation. And then went off to do GI Joe. I said, well, okay. And I booked this cartoon called GI Joe and did all these parts. And then captain N the games master and then kissy fur and, uh, Beanie and Cecil and Camp Candy and then He-Man Masters of the Universe. And I went, oh, this is kind of groovy. And they gave me the part of He-Man and I didn't think much of it, but it was a pretty big deal. That sort of launched my career. And then after that, I just started doing cartoons all the time for years and years, thousands of them. 
and uh, started. Uh, that's when I came up with, uh, well, with GI Joe, with uh, Double Dragon, with Mummies. Um, what was the other one? Van Helsing, Conan, uh, Conan the Barbarian, uh, T Rex, Extreme Dinosaurs. Stream GI Joe, Salty's Playhouse, oh, just, just I can't remember them all, but I did that, and that's what happened. I just sort of started auditioning for it and started getting them, and then I was sort of, you know, going fifty fifty between cartoons and my on camera stuff and doing on camera, and uh, that's how it happened. And then I just became a voiceover guy full time and did that for you know 20 years over 20 years uh, 30 30 years and uh, while well, the the last last five or six years I haven't been doing much in the way of cartoons the odd thing here and there but I think I'm getting too old because most of the cartoon voices these days are kind of small <laughs> you know and I, yeah they're hard to restrain for any length of time so I'm used to doing, you know, the bass device is not a toy. So, demon, you know, I'm used <laughs> to doing those kinds of voices. Yeah. And uh, then the Transformer franchise, that went on for quite a long time. And that's it. Yeah. I'm, st I'm still going. Well, you mentioned doing live action. And I know you actually voiced one of the Warriors of Virtue, I believe. I did, yeah. Which, for anyone who hasn't seen that, you need to check it out. That's the one with all the cam uh, that was the, they were camels and kangaroos or something or kangaroos, like ninja kangaroos. kangaroos. <laughs> yes. Well, funny story with that. The uh, the guy who directed that was named Wu. I think something Wu. I can't remember. That his sounds name. about right. I remember Chinese fellow who was who was quite fun. I really enjoyed him, and then uh, he ended up directing um, uh, Freddy versus Jason. It's Ronnie, Ronnie Yu. Y Ronnie Yu. Yeah, yeah, Ronnie Yu. Ronnie Yu, he did that. And then he did uh, Freddy versus Jason, okay. the movie. And uh, I ended up getting a lead on that movie as well with him. He was very funny. See, you go down here. You are scared, but you're not a scare, scare. You're more concerned. So when you come down the stairs, you see that guy. I want that moment. You're not fat. You are funny. <laughs> so here we go. And I said, look at I, I say we gotta keep this thing contained every scene. He goes, I know, like a joke. We see it contain. Contain this, contain that. You contain everything. It's a joke. It's a joke. And I went, Okay, cool. <laughs> but it was it was quite funny. Ronnie you, what a character. I just adored him. Well, he sounds like he was a fun director. Oh yeah. It was just it was just crazy. And the they had the interpreter there going back and forth, it'd be Half Chinese, half English, half Chinese, half English. And then, <laughs> so, well, what he want? He want you to go over here and do this and do that. And I said, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Sounds like a good time on set. Oh, it was. It was. And since then, I've just, you know, I've, I think I've done oh, over 100 movies, at least 100. I'm not sure. But, you know, a lot of the, like the Fly 2, Freddy vs. Jason, Tomorrowland, Godzilla, oh, Gargantua or something. Uh, what the hell was it? There was, I, I wish I had my IMDb in front of me and I could just sort of, you know, rattle them off. But suffice to say, I've been working pretty well nonstop for the last 30 years, so. Absolutely, Gary. You've definitely done a lot of different shows and movies and animations. Um, I believe you were also in The Watchmen. I was, yes. I was the general. Wow. In yeah, it's the, been a while uh, since room. I've seen that one. <laughs> I remember that. So, well, the casualty rate going to be about 25%, but most of the fallout is going to land across the board into Mexico, so we can deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget it. No, it was great fun. And Tomorrowland was a fantastic movie, so I absolutely love that one. Yeah, I had the smallest part in it, but it was the in the trailer. So I had the most views, like <laughs> 7 million or something like that. It's Gary Chalk. <laughs> yeah, look at that. He's in that movie. Yeah, it's the only thing I'm in. That little scene. 
but it sure was fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, Disney did a really good job on that film for sure. It definitely was I fantastic. So. Well, you know, one of the shows that you've been a part of that I grew up loving was Mega Man, and uh, that came out in 94, and you played one of my favorite bad guys on the show, Gutsman. Oh, you're talking about Gutsman. Yeah. Gutsman, my favorite character. Oh, yes, I remember him very well. What was it like working with that cast, Gary? Well, let's see. Who was in there? There was Terrell Rothery was in it. Scott McNeil was in it. Um, Jim Burns was in it. Myself. Uh, who else was in that show? Mega Man was played by Ian James Corlett. Ian Corlett. Ian yeah. James Corlett. Yeah. I think Doug Parker was in there too. There was a few of us in that show. Yeah, but that was fun. We were working with uh, I think with that was the time we were working with Wally Burr. Yeah, Wally Burr did a lot of different things back in that era. Well, he's uh, he's suffering right now. He had a stroke about three weeks ago or a oh. month ago. Oh no! And he's in bad health right now. But he must be ninety almost. I hadn't heard that about him having the stroke. That's really sad to hear. Yes. Well, you can give a shout out to your fans and your viewers to uh, send them good healing thoughts because that's what we've been doing. I, I was talking to his wife uh, uh, last month about uh, about Wally because I worked a lot with Wally and I was one of the few people that I really got along with him very well because he would he would go after you and he would say, no, you've got to go so like this, the Bershendo, and you just do it. And then he would go, but he would get so frustrated sometimes because he can hear it in his head, but he can't hear it when somebody else says it. <laughs> so it's a bit mad. Anyway, so, uh, you know, it would make for some very interesting sessions and long sessions. But I did Conan with him and uh, Sergeant Slaughter and... Uh, Mega Man, Bucky O'Hare in the Toad Wars. Yeah, you uh, played uh, Commander Dogish. Dogstar. Dogstar, I'm sorry. Dogstar. Yeah, so I was going out for these like jelly and cheese bombs, Bucky my lad. Yeah, I did that and Al Negator and yeah, I remember those. I had my little mammal. Yeah, that was fun. That was a classic show. Bucky O'Hare's theme song was really energetic and fun too. I love the Bucky O'Hare. And it's Bucky O'Hare. <laughs> oh. The theme songs from that era were fantastic. G.I. Joe, all of those. Transformers. I, no, I just love that. I used to do a, a blues thing of Transformers. Transformers. More than meets the eye. Transformers. More than meets the eye. Robots <laughs> in disguise. Uh, I can't do it now, but I do it sometimes just for a laugh on stage. Hey, that's fantastic, man. Yeah, but uh, yeah, Wally, uh, a, a, a great fun guy. I remember all the little drawings he used to draw all over the script to do to uh, to show, you know, action or emotion or what you know, whatever people were doing. It was like like Egyptian hieroglyphics all over your script. But it was fun. I was talking to Dan Galvezan from Gen 1 uh, Transformers the, in, in uh, Oklahoma. We were talking about that. That's awesome. It's quite funny. And Greg Berger. That's fantastic. Well, we've kind of briefly touched on Transformers. The one show that I think most people remember you from is uh, Beast Wars when you played Optimus Primal, which was a fantastic yeah. series. So I thought so. Well, I loved, I, I loved the different spin on it with the, the animals and the creatures and stuff. Tigertron was another one of my favorites. I loved Cheetor and uh, Rat Trap and uh, Rhino. Or I, I, think, I think it was Rhinox. Rhinox, yeah. But uh, that whole group was, uh, man, that was a fantastic show. It was a fantastic cast to work with. That was with Doug Parker and Venus Terzo and Scott McNeil, Jim Burns, uh, Richard Newman, Ian Corlett, who else was in there? Um, oh, God, David Kay, Tiger Tron, Jim, uh, uh, um, uh, Blue Man Kuma. Yeah, they were, they, they were, we, God, we had fun doing that show. And Sue <laughs> Blue was directing it as well. And yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was a great one. 
I like that. I liked it. I liked the cast. We had a really nice uh, rapport between us, you know, because, you know, we'd all, we uh, we recorded everything ensemble. Okay. So we were all in the room together, which uh, sometimes could be a bit of a mistake, (laughs) given (laughs) that we'd, we'd have a lot of fun. One time Scotty fell asleep on the floor in the in the studio and we covered him with scripts. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you guys were honoring. Yes, we were we were honoring, but you know what? We had a hell of a lot of fun. Which is, you know, you want work to be fun and it sounds like you guys had a blast doing what you were doing, so. Well, I'll tell you, they were that that decade, the decade between 87 and 2000 before 9/11, that decade was probably the most exciting decade of my life the the best time i ever had in my life was that time i mean it was busy i mean it was crazy busy i work every day every single day and it was it was a bit wild but man oh man that was living you were just i was just alive every every hour (laughs) (laughs) you know sometimes work i remember working sometimes 20 hours a day I'd, I'd start cartoons at eight in the morning or sorry. Yeah. Eight or nine in the morning. I'd finish at three, run home, brush my teeth, hop in a car, drive to set, work on set until four in the morning, get up at eight, go to the studio, do cartoons, try and grab an hour of sleep, then rush off to set and work till four in the morning. I did that for a couple of weeks. I was a bit of a crazy man. Wow. That sounds yeah. like an intense schedule, Gary. <laughs> it, it, it was an intense schedule, but hey, paid hey. for the house. So <laughs> <laughs> it was all worth it. All worth it. Yeah. Well, after you got to do Beast Wars, you did get to come back and reprise your role as the essence of what Optimus Primal was as actual Optimus Prime in both, uh, tra- well, in all three uh, Transformers Armada, Transformers Energon, and Transformers Cybertron. Yes. So that was fantastic to see you come back and play that lead role of the Autobots. Well, you know, the, th- the funny thing about those, those shows is I wanted to play them like, like uh, Primal, but they wanted me to play them like Prime, like the, the Peter Cullen voice. And I tried that sort of i don't know if i succeeded some people say i didn't i didn't do justice to primal or and uh or to prime and i and i guess i just had a misconception i thought they wanted to have the primal voice rather than the prime voice but it still worked out we came up with a balance between the two some people liked them some people didn't but that's okay you can't please everybody well to be absolutely honest with you as a kid i couldn't really distinguish the two when I was younger. I, uh, I mean, I can tell now as I've gotten older, but your your voice uh, for Primal was very different. But when you did Prime, I thought it was pretty dead on. So, Well, thank you very much for that. Oh, you're thank very you. welcome. Yeah. Well, a, oh. sorry, what were you going to say, Gary? No, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I was just going to say, a show that you've been in that people may not be as familiar with is King Arthur and the Knights of Justice, which was one of my absolute all-time favorites uh, because it was like superheroes combined with medieval times and you played Lord Viper, Sir Phil, and Sir Brick. So those three main characters on the show. Yeah, Sir Brick. I, 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 I came on to Sir Brick later on because the guy who originally played it had left or something. So I took over and he was kind of like the big old palooka kind of guy, if I can remember. I just can't remember the voice, right? but I remember Lord Viper. <laughs> Destroy them! Kill them all! Yes, I remember that. <laughs> that was actually a pretty darn good show. It was fantastic. Like yeah, they still air it somewhere. I hope. I, I haven't I seen it in a long time, but I love that show. They need to bring it back. I've, I've actually wanted them to make a live-action version of that show. That would be, now, that would be cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think that would be very, very cool. It'd make a fantastic feature film, and you should totally be in it. <laughs> and I should totally be in it. Well, you, could, you could be Merlin. Merlin, you think? <laughs> so uh, another show that you played on that was actually one that I was kind of fascinated with and watched a lot as a kid was The Littlest Pet Shop, and you played Sarge. He was a little oh, like... Oh, Bernice! <laughs> you know I love you, Bernice! Come on! <laughs> Oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> that was a great well, show. Andrew, the great big kind of General Patton kind of voice. Yeah, 
yeah. was in love with Bernice, who I think was a giant Persian cat, or it was either a Persian cat or a boa constrictor. I can't remember. I don't but remember. I know it was a very odd relationship. <laughs> yeah, it I was think it was a big some Persian cat. The big the odd couple. One. Yeah. <laughs> But now they're, they've done it again, with a, but they have a different, uh, a whole different uh, breakdown from that one. I like the original one better than, than this new one I've seen. Yeah, when the new one came out, I was going, dang, I think that was, I was like, I remember there being a show when I was younger called Littlest Pet Shop, but it's been so long since I've seen it. And yeah. I was pretty sure that was a remake of the original. So It was, yeah. But the, uh, they had, the characters were all different. Yeah, they'd all kind of changed it up a little bit. Yeah. Hey everyone, I hope you've been enjoying today's episode, part one, with Gary Chalk, the voice of Optimus Primal and so many other amazing characters. Please tune in next Friday to hear part two. We'll see you then. You know, a question you might ask yourself is, where can I listen to Who Did That Voice? That's an excellent question. You can hear us on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, YouTube, and our website at www.whodidthatvoice.co. Click the Episodes tab and listen away.